How's it going, guys? It is 4.36 a.m., the 9th of May here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty or slightly difficult question for pharmacology for step one. They ask bortezomib twice on the new NBME content. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our fucking time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and mehl man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 56 year old woman. She has multiple myeloma. Okay, so hypercalcemia, nephrotic syndrome. You need to know that obviously hypercalcemia from the lytic lesions we get with multiple myeloma, pepper pot skull as well. Nephrotic syndrome is going to be renal amyloidosis. You need to know that. Uh, multiple myeloma is the most common cause of renal amyloidosis and cardiac amyloidosis on USMLE. It's a long discussion. I made tons of YouTube clips on this stuff. But in multiple myeloma, we are going to have plasma cells. Okay, so it's a cancer of plasma cells. This is our bone marrow biopsy showing us clock face chromatin. Holy shit. So we've got basophilic, which means purple. So we have basophilic large nuclei and within the basophilic large nuclei we have even more highly basophilic even more dark purple areas it's supposed to be clock face chromatin if we hallucinate okay and this is buzzy for the plasma cells we get with multiple myeloma so we have greater than 10 percent plasma cells and bone marrow biopsy and they are going to be producing immunoglobulins we're going to have a very elevated igg kappa or lambda m protein spike just means monoclonal spike in the serum okay so that's clearly what we have here made tons of clips on it as i already said and then we have bortezomib holy shit now bortezomib is a proteasome inhibitor if you were to look this up on the internet that's pretty much what you'll find just bortezomib proteasome inhibitor that's not what usmle assesses though so there's two points they want you to know the first is that bortezomib is going to decrease expression of MHC1 on the cell surface of nucleated cells, okay? MHC1 is fairly ubiquitous. So decrease MHC1 expression. That's the first point you need to know. I said that this is asked twice. The second point you need to know, and you can probably infer based, you can infer the answer based on what I just said, that if you have decreased MHC1 expression on the surface of nucleated cells, in turn, we are going to have decreased CD8 T cell activation. Okay, so those are the two points you need to know for bortezomib for USMLE, not dramatic. So B cell activation, fucking wrong. CD4 plus T cell activation, fucking wrong. Okay, what are we gonna do? 16 minute discussion of all uh, nitpicky immunology. USMLE doesn't care, right? So I can comment, uh, isotype class switching, you should know that this occurs when we have CD40 ligand on the surface of Th2 CD4 plus T cells. So CD40L, CD40 ligand, will bind to CD40 on B cells. And that will cause the antibodies that B cells produce to switch isotypes, which just means IgM, IgG, IgD, IgE, IgA, okay? So if you can't do that, if you have deficiency of CD40 or CD40 ligand, then you get hyper IgM syndrome. So that's what USMLE would do. So they'll just give you a big fucking paragraph with some immunodeficiency. You don't know what's going on. You see IgM is super high. All the other immunoglobulins are low. The answer is just, just deficiency of CD40 ligand. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Finally, decrease in K-cell activity, wrong fucking answer. So you should know that NK cells, this is a factoid that's notable for USMLE. They ask it a couple times. You need to know NK cells, natural killer cells, wake up. They have increased activity if they can sense decreased MHC1 expression on the surface of viral infected or tumorigenic cells. Okay, so in this case, we have decreased in the setting of bortezomib, as I said, we have decreased MHC1 expression and in turn decrease C8 plus T cell activation. But if anything, decreased MHC1 expression on the surface of viral infected and tumorigenic cells would increase, not decrease NK cell activity. Okay? So, wrong fucking answer.
You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.